Mr. J. Young, you on Showtime TV. Why don't you tell the folks what you're working on right about now? Got my uh, Craig Sessions mixtape about to drop next week. So, it's going to be Matter of fact, this came from the studio, <laughs> wrapping that up last night. But most importantly, we're working on my album, official album. You've never seen it coming. <laughs> uh, we hope to have that out before the summer. <laughs> um, working on that as well. Really putting the finishing touches on that right now. So, that's what we got going. You got any shows, anything coming up? You gonna be on the road anytime soon? Going on the road, man. Matter of fact, we're getting ready to go on the road next week. Got a uh, show coming up in the center of Texas. Uh, it's gonna be pretty live. Uh, after that, we're gonna hit the road, uh, do a lot of spots in East Texas, uh, Louisiana, Dallas. You know, oh, all stupid! All that there. Then after that, come back home probably for another week, maybe two. Then I get on the road again. Texas Relays coming first weekend in April. So. I mean, we busy, but we trying to get this, you know, make sure we get the proper promotion every time. So, so what kind of look? What kind of fans look for in the Crash Session mixtape and the Never Seen It Coming album? What's the difference between your Crash Session's mixtape as opposed to your Never Seen It Coming album? I like to look at the, uh, the Crash Session's mixtape as a, a prequel to the album. It's like a. It's like a. Basically, the difference, the biggest difference between Crash Sessions and the actual album, I say, was probably the process of me put, putting it together. Uh, the Crash Sessions, that's more of a collection of songs that we felt was real hot that I've done over the past few months. Whereas the album, we've recorded well, well, probably well over 40 songs for the album. And that has come over a period of time, but we're trying to make make sure that the album gels together and it's going to be front to back. I mean, the, the you know, Crash Sessions, I feel, is going to be better than a lot of boys' albums. Okay, so in the album, I know a lot of consumers are kind of disappointed because most artists are coming out with albums now and it's only two or three good songs on the album and they buy it and, yeah. and they're, they're upset. How do you feel like you can differ from these other artists that's releasing albums right now? I actually care what people think. There's some people that be like, I don't care, you know, whatever, whatever. I care. I put a lot of thought in it. Everything, every, everything is a real a real meticulous process. I don't just go in the studio and just just flow over a nice beat. Everything has to make sense. And I think when the listener gets the album, they gonna hear that. I take my craft seriously. It's not nothing fly by night. I think that's really what's gonna separate me from the past. Okay, so saying that What's your process in making a song? I mean, do you do you look for a beat first, or do you write the song first, or is get, it a combination of both? I, I, I get inspiration out of mid air, yeah, honestly. I mean, I got a ton of songs that have no beat. Then it's, it's instances like last night's instance. We sitting here going through, going through the files, and we just found a beat. And I wrote a song on spot. So I mean, you could say it's a combination of both. I, you know. Woke up in the middle of the night and grabbed my notepad, just fresh out of dreams, started writing. So, I mean, yeah, you can say it's a combination of both. Okay. What what do you say to the critics that say you're not a you're not a real southern rapper? You you're from the south, but you don't you don't have that southern rap style. What do you say to your supposed critics? The thing about that is if you're going to say I'm not a real Southern rapper, then you got to say Scarface not a real Southern rapper. you got to say Andre 3000 not a real Southern rapper. you got to say uh, Big Boy, hell, the boy, Outkast both, they not Southern. you got to say, uh, shit, K. Reno, uh, Mr. Mike. you got to say all these cats is not Southern. You know what I'm saying? Those, those are my inspirations right there. So... I mean, it's not so much about me not rapping like a, I guess a Southern artist is supposed, is supposed to rap. It's more of me stepping away from the pack and showing up another side of the South. 
So how do you feel like you can balance that and not not feel like you're not taking a care of the hometown as far as your music and what your hometown is used to hearing or maybe incorporating what you do that sound into the hometown sound I mean, you know you definitely don't want to alienate your you know alienate home what i do i take i mean so i take i mean I'm, like i say i'm a southern i'm a southern dude so i'm here every day i talk about stuff that goes on around me every day i just incorporate you know my twist on it you know i do it a bit more metaphorical than the average cat from around here may be doing. But in hindsight, for the most part, we talking about the same thing. I just I just come across it a different way. The thing with a lot of Southern artists, it's like direct. With me, I'm saying it direct, but like I said, I'm putting a twist on it. I'm making you think. That's really the only, I mean, that's, that's what it is. Okay, I understood that y'all had some uh, some sort of situation or something with Universal, and can you explain why that didn't happen, or, or, or are you able to talk on that? Yeah, I, what, it, what it boiled down to, honestly, I think it just wasn't time. Basically, they told us one thing, and the paperwork says something else. And they didn't want to change the word in the paperwork, so that's really it. It's no big deal, though, the show must go on. So is this hearsay, or did did you see an actual copy of the contract? Or? I, I still got an actual copy of the contract. It, it was actual contract, there's meetings, everything. So it it was the real deal. It wasn't just you know hearsay. So so what's the process in uh, rejecting or accepting these contracts? Is it an executive decision, or or does the brass sit down with the artists and talk it all over with the staff and everybody, or is it? They definitely sat down with everybody. I mean, from from the start, from from when we first even the situation was presented to us, you know, they um, I mean, step by step, every day it was something new. They was keeping us updated, sitting us down, you know, we we having meetings all the time, you know. So it, it wasn't a, a thing where like they just said, well, you know what, we not gonna do it, you know. It was everybody was aware, you know from the jump what was going on. So they definitely kept, you know, the communication on that. Okay. I understand that Showtime Entertainment is a independent label, but there there are thousands of those around now, as you already know. If anybody's able to make an album or make a song and put it on MySpace, what do you feel is different from Showtime Entertainment than from your normal independent label or from your normal average person that says he has a label also? Man, where do I start? <laughs> um, everybody affiliated with Showtime Entertainment is serious. This is what we do. You know what I'm saying? We to the point now ain't no nine to fives going on and we do this on the weekend. So this is really what we do. But more so, we like to uh, basically run with the same format as a larger label would run. Not necessarily a major, but a larger label would run. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just what it is. Everything, paperwork right. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we take care of business. So, it's do, like or, so um, do you have an actual budget, or do y'all just say, I'm going to go do this, and we're going to go do that? Or? Everything. We, got, we get budgets. We get budgets different. That's it. Okay, anything else? Any, any, any closing remarks? Anything you want your fans to know, or critics, or anything like that? I mean, just open your ears, open your minds to something new, because the album is not gonna sound anything probably like what you used to hear. But if you if you listen to it, there is a message with the music. So definitely keep your keep your minds and your ears open. Um, and just to let all the critics know, there is such thing as southern lyricism, still, and I'm gonna prove it.